professional wrestling is wild, over-the-top masculine drama, turned up to an 11. It's meant to be fun and cathartic and a little bit tongue-in-cheek, almost like masculinity is busting its own balls. A lot of people don't get it, but the fans love it. And for the men who grew up watching professional wrestling, it's an important piece of American masculinity. Dom Vitale has been an independent pro wrestler for 21 years. He promotes events with Phoenix Championship Wrestling and student-run shows called Slam U. Dom has also been teaching wrestling at the Arizona Pro Wrestling Training Center since 2019. And he recently invited me over to teach me some moves and train with some of his best guys. I don't think I really appreciated the skill or athleticism involved in professional wrestling until I tried it. There is an entire vocabulary of moves that you'd have to learn to put on a successful match. And there's a lot of trust and communication involved between the different athletes. After a couple of days of training, I sat down with Dom to talk pro wrestling. And I asked him, what do you think draws people to it? You know, I, I try to liken that to what drew me to it. Okay. And honestly, like, I think it's the characters. I think it's the over-the-top personalities. I think that's what really draws people in now. Like, look at something like like UFC, MMA. Like, mm -hmm. those guys are extremely talented, and I, I could never touch anything that they do. But they are, some of them are just straight-up fighters, mm -hmm. you know, and they're there for business. And yeah. it's kind of like, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But if you add a little, like, you know, salt and pepper on the steak, like a Conor McGregor, it's kind of like, all right. And Conor McGregor is pro wrestling. I mean, right. he, he really is. So I think it's just this, this combination of that combat element mm -hmm. with this, this over the top characters, these stories that you can kind of control as well and kind of tell your own narrative mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a wrestling promotion or a wrestling organization. I think you, you, you're also able to give the people what you think they want. Where again, if you, know, you put in Mike Tyson and Vander Holyfield on pay-per-view, they could go 12 rounds, they could go 30 seconds, you know, but as, as in pro wrestling, we have the advantage to put that out there the, the exact way that we want to or as close to it as we possibly can. What we do in this ring is 100% legitimate. Like the, the, the bumps and the bruises, all that stuff is real. Gravity is real, you can't fake that. Um, and I know kind of people try to like throw that word around and stuff like that, but the pain is real. You know, I'm, I've done this for a long time and I have bad back, bad neck, bad knees, bad everything. So I wish this was fake. <laughs> I'd be a lot more limber right now if it was. I think one of the lost elements of wrestling, especially for someone that maybe doesn't know the ins and outs, which is com you know, completely normal, um, is that the, the trust factor is huge because you are literally putting your life in the hands of somebody else. So the idea here is again for us, we're both going to land together in the flat. Um, but again, I'm going to need your help getting you over the top. So what I mean by that is so side by side, I'm going to put your hand, put your arm over my hand. Well, I can do it. You can post off of this again, like a body slam. I'm going to grab you here. You're going to think we go down, yep. and then when we come up, I'm gonna pop my hips okay. and extend you. Right. You're just crushing. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna yeah. the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Nice and easy. You got the mat. We're gonna get some nice and good and test it on. All right. Yeah. Are you sure you're ready? Uh, <laughs> All right. You're gonna just push off your yeah. when you're ready to go yeah. up and over. I'm gonna pull the entire time and just try not to land feet first. That's your big objective. Yep. All right. Ready? One, two. Okay, yeah. Easy, easy? Yeah. All right, give me one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Yes. In this, I feel comfortable. Okay. So they, they, I'm going to show you without a body right now. Right. So your key is you're here. Come down. It's this. Take hip pop and extension with the arms. And what you don't want to do is pop the hips and keep the guy close like this. Right. Before I go, you have to come out of the tank. Right. Let's take it over. So think when you pop your hips, get tall. Okay. Yeah. 
this whole line of the entire way down. Okay. So we're all right here. Yeah, both places. So we're going to be connected here okay. and here. Okay. So the whole way you can let go of this, but we're going to this is where we want to stay the whole time. Okay? okay? I'm going to push that through. Right, so we're, you can grab like that waistband, grab a chunk of the shorts, whatever you got to do. A little higher, a little bit higher, you get better. Yep. Yep. And then don't go for it yet, but I want you to simulate it. So I want you to pop those in. Yeah. And then rotate me over the top. You ready? Yep. One, two, three. The thing is get that full extension. Right. I'm wrestling you, Jack, and you're not in the shape that you need to be to protect me. You know, what happens if, you know, we're wrestling a 30 minute match in minute 25, you can't go anymore, but you needed to lift me over your head and, and you dropped me because you weren't prepared. Then, you know, God forbid something terrible happens to me and then, you know, I can't provide for my family anymore. Um, so I think a lot of people, you know, miss that fact. It, it's, yes, this is, this is, showmanship and it's entertainment but this is a sport and this is a sport of trust and you, you know you don't always need to like the person that you're in the ring with yeah and i think that's a misconception too i've wrestled plenty of people that i don't fucking like personally but there's a professional element to it and it's trust yay we can put that bullshit aside for right now i trust you with your with my life just as so you can trust me with yours and, and you know when, when that bell rings and, and then it rings again when it's over you know, I can shake your hand and say, you know, thank you, appreciate it. And then, you know, as I'm walking away, I can go fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs>So it's, it's pretty basic to be quite honest. You got to, the big leagues is WWE. That, that, I, Cause and I always tell everybody that whether you love them or you hate them and you know, it doesn't matter. That's where you're going to make the most money. That's the, that's the, that's the Disney of, of what we do. It's the biggest thing out there. And there's some other organizations that are considered like the big leagues as well. Um, you're not going to make as much money, but you may be on national television. You may be contracted to wrestle specifically for them and get paid handsomely for that. And that's, that's awesome. Um, but below that is what we call the independent wrestling scene. That's what we essentially are doing here. It's kind of like the farm system for the most part uh, of, of pro wrestling in general. This is the independent scenes where you kind of get your feet under you, you get your experience, you travel around, you wrestle different people, you, get, you learn all different kinds of styles, you, you learn the business of professional wrestling. Um, and then hopefully we get to a point where your, your skill is at a certain level and you have something that's marketable. A place like WWE will, will seek you out, hopefully, and sign you to a contract to, to hopefully make it you know, worth your while for the long haul. Um, but everyone's got to start somewhere, and that's what we do here. This is our training facility. You know, people come in with zero experience, and we give them the basic training, and, you know, and until they're, they're actually ready to compete in an actual match, and then we help them kind of get out on that independent circuit and start making a name for themselves. The interesting part about that is when I started this, I never really considered the human element of it. I always thought of the wrestling element of it for the longest time. And it didn't take long for us to, going through the process we first opened where I'm like, wait a second, like this is doing a lot more for these guys than just teaching them how to lock up and do have like take over and suplex people. Um, and I didn't realize that until they were actually not only just showing me, but they started taking me to the side and saying, hey, like this is the best thing that I have going in my life. This place is my sanctuary. You know, and that was like, that floored me. And that was never, my intention besides making good wrestlers was always trying to make good people for sure. And I think those two things go hand in hand. Like if you're, if you're doing this the right way, you're going to learn some basic human life skills that are going to translate out to the real world. But I think the biggest difference was here, we, we compete at such a high athletic demanding level 
that it brings more out of you than normally would be expected. You know, if you're just kind of the dude that goes to the, the gym, you know, five days a week and just kind of nails it in. You know, I think the same can, can be said for anything like, like jujitsu or any other kind of sport like this where it's, you know, you're, you're doing that extra. Um, and I've had, you know, someone reach out to me and say this place saved their life, like legitimately. I've had someone, you know, threaten to take his own life one time, um, one of my students and who, you know, I dropped everything out. And now this isn't to, you know, paint myself in this like sainthood light or anything like that, but myself and two of my other students dropped everything we did, we, everything we had going on at 10.30 at night on a Monday to go find him and make sure he was safe and okay. Um, and he was, you know, grateful for that. And we were grateful that he was safe, you know, that and just the, the fact that, you know, so many guys have come through here and transformed themselves physically to now where they're, 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 physically strong, but also mentally stronger. And some of them are, you know, planning for a future and they're like, hey, now like I'm in a better spot for, for my wife or my kids and I can set that example for them and really, you know, and show them like it's, it, it's better this way, you know? And so it's like this lineage aspect too. It's like, not only does it affect the students here, but that's a trickle down effect too, where it affects their families at home and their loved ones. And, you know, if we're passing down the right message, um, fuck yeah, I'm gonna keep doing that, man, you know? Um, and it's just, the, the, but to me, the best compliment I get is like guys that come here when they're not scheduled to be here, just to hang out, just to be here and help out. Um, and, I, and you know, it's kind of like, what are you doing here? Like, I, I, I have to be here. And this is like, a, you know, a second home to a lot of the guys. And I, I want it to be like that. And we are a close-knit group. We're a tribe, man. That's what it comes down to. And I always, I always talk about that too with them. I go, this is, this is our tribe and we have to protect this tribe at, at all costs um, and, and protect the perimeter, so to speak. So there's a general layout. And again, this isn't for like every single match ever. Mm -hmm. Obviously like different matches have different stories, have different backstories, have different characters. Right. So there's like, there's no one be all end all way to like tell the story in the ring. Right. Uh, general idea though, for something like maybe two guys that have never wrestled before, some beginners or just the basic concept of a match, which is the basic concept I think of like good versus evil and like that triumphant story right. at the end. So we have, first is the establishment of character, baby face, heel, good guy, bad guy. So the audience knows, I can't cheer this guy, I boo this guy, I know that right away. Mm -hmm. So that's that, that establishment of the characters themselves. Uh, the first, the next part is the, uh, what we call the shine. That's where the good guy or the baby face gets a chance to have his moment in the sun. You know, he shows that he's a better wrestler than the other guy. He shows that, you know, he's, he's skilled. He knows what he's doing. He gives those people up more of a reason to get behind him. Like, okay, this guy's the real deal. He gives people hope is what it is. Uh, from there, we have to chop the legs out from the baby face. <laughs> That's what we call uh, a cutoff. So it's usually where the bad guy or the heel puts a stop to all that nonsense that's going on. Um, usually it's done in a dastardly type of way, maybe like a little bit of a cheating or doing something that maybe isn't by the, by the rules. Um, again, that's part of the character establishment. A bad guy wouldn't do that. So he wouldn't do it cleanly, you know, or by the book. Right. Um, so now we have the, 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 the baby face at the mercy of the heel. Mm -hmm. So now we, we do the heat, which is where the, Putting it in layman's terms, the baby face get the shit kicked out of them right. for a while. Um, this is where the, the heel really just kind of punishes the good guy. Mm -hmm. Again, further character establishment. This, this mean, nasty, bad guy is doing downright dirty, nasty things to this guy we like, and we don't like it, and we're gonna boo him. Right. So, you have your heat at that point. You'll usually have what's called a, a hope for the baby face or the good guy. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's, there's more than one hope throughout the match, but that hope is, again, giving the people reason to believe that the good guy is still in the fight. So he may fight back, punch back, get a couple moves in maybe, but not enough, down you go again. So that's that, that hope, ah, oh, wait, here he comes. Ah, oh, man, I thought he was gonna do it this time. Mm -hmm. um, after your hope, you actually, that's when you have your final comeback. This is like the crescendo of the entire match or the movie. If you compare it to a movie, this is where the good guy starts rocking and rolling. You know, he has the bad guy on the ropes. You're Rocky's big comeback at the end of, of Rocky where he's got Apollo, Apollo Creed on him and just lighting him up. 
that's the big comeback for the baby face. But now the people are with him. Here it is, finally. And then the last portion is the finish or the, the finale, if you will. And that could go either way. You could have the good guy end up winning that match. The bad guy could end up winning match. It just kind of depends on what story is being told. Uh, but the, the finale, the finish is, is the final part of the, the lovely story of pro wrestling, as I like to put it. You have to feed off the fans. I think that's the biggest um, mistake a lot of young wrestlers in particular make, mm -hmm. is they have this idea of what they want to do and they stick to that too much. And I'm the opposite, I teach my guys the opposite as well. I, I say, listen to the crowd. If you can feed off of them and not necessarily do what they're telling you to do, but tell them the story that you kind of figure that they, they need to be told. Yeah, I always, they come to these events and they're not afraid to, to scream and yell and cheer and sometimes say things they probably should in front of other you know, little kids that may be there enjoying the event, but they get so wrapped up in, in the, the performance or the characters that are there. To me, that's like one of the best parts of it all is because it's, it's like they're, they're putting all the bullshit aside that they have in their real life for that two hours on that Saturday night. They're forgetting all the problems, hopefully anyway. That's that's the hope, that's why we do this. So they can come, forget about their fucking shitty boss that's, that treats them like garbage, or they can forget about the fight they're having with their girlfriend, or they can forget about the fact that their kids aren't talking to them at home, or wherever the case may be, and come and just get lost in this wacky ass world of pro wrestling and kind of act like the manager for their favorite wrestlers from, from the crowd and yell and scream and hoot and holler. And you know, it, I think it's like a, like a, a safe, a safe place, so to speak, for them to kind of get that out where they normally, you can't walk down the street and, and act like that a lot of times, although some people do. Um, but there it's kind of like, I'm gonna let it all out and get emotionally attached to the wrestlers. I think that's the biggest key. And that's what I tell my guys, make these people get emotionally attached to what you do and who you are, and you'll have a fan for life. I think it looks like fun masculine theater. You know, I think that's the biggest piece because like I, you could look like anybody in the world, but if you watch like something like WWE and you see a guy like, um, like Randy Orton, mm -hmm. who's well put together and looks great. If you're any guy out there, you're gonna be like, man, I wish I looked like that guy. And then you see him come out and you do all this cool stuff in the ring and hit, hit, hit his maneuvers and gets up to the top rope and does this thing and the people just cheer for him and the girls screaming for him. That's what the that's the, the masculine piece. It's like, yeah, I wanna be that guy because I wanna look like that guy. I wanna be able to do what he does and I want those girls to be fawning over me. I think that's that's the biggest element. Like when I was a little kid, you know, before I discovered, you know, girls and all that stuff, like I saw Hulk Hogan, I'm like, I wanna be like Hulk Hogan, I wanna be big and strong and, and I wanna save the day. You know, because Hulk Hogan was big and strong and he always saved the day. I, I think that's at its at its root, I think that's what it is for a, a lot of the fans, whether they're you know seven years old or whether they're 35 years old, there's that connectivity that you have, and I, and I think I, I think the, the root of it is based in masculinity. That there's one of those traits, oh, that guy's strong. I wanna be strong like him. Or like, oh, that guy's really good at wrestling. I wish I was as good at wrestling as him. Or, you know, that guy's a really good stand-up dude. You know, he tells it like it is. I wish I had that, that quality in myself. So all those like different pillars of, of masculinity that all come into play. And I don't think, whether people realize that or not, I think, I think that's a you know, whole other story. But um, I think that's what it really comes back down to is, is you know, it is bare bones. It's I want to be like that. Yeah. Read my book, The Way of Men. It's the best book about masculinity out there.